Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to film a video today in my newly cleaned craft room talking about paper crafting inspiration and where as paper crafters we find inspiration. I did a blog post about this about a month and a half ago and I thought I'd just talk a little bit more about it in a video and kind of show you some things I've been working on lately and some where I've been finding some inspiration. So let me start over with my stamps. As I was making all these cards, I, I was making a lot of birthday cards and I found myself having difficulty finding certain stamps. There was one I, I was, oh, there was a, it was a stamp that said cheers on it. And I, it was this, I actually have more than one stamp that says cheers on it, if you can believe it. And I couldn't remember where I put it. And I have a lot of sentiment stamps. And I thought, well, maybe is it in sentiments? Is it in birthday? <laughs> what, what do I consider the word cheers being? And then I was thinking, okay, I probably need to get back to categorizing my stamps using some kind of an app. I kind of fell off doing that. I was using a couple of different types of apps. I A long time ago, I started using Evernote and I found that to be really helpful. And I recently watched a video from Ardith Percy Robb, which I'll, I'll link to. And she showed how she organizes her stamps according to certain categories using Evernote. And I kind of got re-inspired again. And I thought, you know what, I need to do this because it will help me find what I need a lot quicker. I, I'm currently not on any design teams. I'm just kind of crafting for myself. I do do some local things too with my cards, craft shows and that type of thing. So it does help me to have some kind of organization still on, you know, trying to find things quickly. But um, I decided, I think part of my problem too was that I probably have a little too much. So even though I do have my stamps categorized, you know, I do like images and shapes and florals and food and that kind of thing. I, I think I do need to clear some things out. Uh, there's just stamps I don't reach for anymore. And so that is my plan. The next couple of weeks is to kind of go through and really take out the things that I don't think I'm gonna use anymore. And just focus on, on things I truly, truly like and that help me stay inspired. So, and then I'm gonna kind of put everything into the Evernote program and hopefully that will help me a little bit in keeping everything organized. Um, I, I'll have like my phone, I can like kind of sync it up with my computer and then I can kind of use both things to to kind of look up stuff and I think it'll, it'll make it a lot easier. So that was, the, kind of the first thing I was thinking about as far as inspiration, just trying to stay organized. And I think that helps you with your workflow. So, so that's what's going on in this, in the stamping area. And then I was really excited because I've talked a lot about um, books and magazines. And I, I've always, since I, I've started scrapbooking and stamping about 15 years ago, and that's like when they had all kinds of books and magazines out and I just I bought everything because I love just looking and being inspired by all the crafters that were in the magazines but I still subscribe to the, the a few that are left and one of them is this creative stamping magazine and I I've talked about this before I think in another video but this month I got two at the same time which I was excited about because I get a subscription and I think they come once a month it's either once a month or every other month but I think just with the holidays and everything, I was, I might have been behind in my, in my issue. So I got two at the same time. So I was so excited because I can um, start working with, with the stamps that are in here. But this is, I loved the stamps that came in these issues. This is uh, kind of a sports themed stamp set. And it came with two this time and it came with these really cute sporting silhouettes. So it's like the little shadow versions of people doing all kinds of sports. And I actually don't have, I, I don't even think I have any sporting stamps. I might have a stamp set that has like a tennis racket on it or something, but I don't have anything specifically sports related. So so this these are great. This one has, the, this is like the full size stamp that comes with it. And it's got like trophies and even a race car and duffel bag and boxing gloves. It's got every kind of sport and it's got some nice, sentiments on it too. So I, I'm excited to make something with this. This one was my favorite. This is kind of a crafty themed 
stamp set that came with this one. This is, so the first one I talked about was, this was issue 92 and this is issue 91 of Creative Stamping. And this stamp set is just adorable. It has a cute little stamping platform on it. And then I also like the little, the die cutting machine too. Looks like my little Sizzix machine. So, but it has like um, paint brushes and all kinds of like ink and just everything on it. And it also came with a uh, embossing folder too with some sentiments on it. So I thought this was really cute. So I'm excited to work with this and I might do a video just kind of showing, you know, how you can use the stamps that you get with these these magazines because I know they have a few out. I don't get, I only get this one and then I get um, scrap scrapbooking cards today. I really like that one. And then I also get creative scrapbooker, which I really like too. Those don't come with stamp sets, but I know there's some other ones out there. Like I think die cutting essentials, those come with like a die set. Um, but I don't think you can get a subscription to that in the U S this for some reason was the only one that you could get a reasonable, reasonably priced subscription to. So I definitely um, jumped on that because I, this is, has great stuff in the magazine too. So, but it's also fun to get like a little surprise stamp every month. So, so I really like that. But anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about some of my books and things too, when we go over to the bookshelf, but I thought I'd just kind of show, show that this was what, what was kind of inspiring me lately with products. I also got in the mail, I ordered, I haven't tried the Slimline cards yet. I, I'm a, I really just like the four and a quarter by five and a half, or I like the little four bar size note cards. I love to make those, but I saw Simon Says Stamp had these mini Slimline cards. Sorry for the shaky camera here. So I picked up a couple of packs of just their basic white mini slimline cards and it's a really cute size um I don't I the bigger slimlines are were a little bit too big and bulky for me but I thought this was a really cute size I think it's let me bring you over to the ruler here I wasn't I don't think it says how it doesn't say how big they are let me see here it's about Let me try a different here. We'll get this ruler. Um, let me see. It's about six and a half by, and then I think I, th these are unfolded. So about six and a half by like three, almost three and a quarter size. So so they're it's it's a it's an interesting size. So I. I thought it would be fun to try to make some some cards with this or maybe even like a card set using these. And then I got some envelopes to go with it and they're kind of like a top, like a flap envelope that is like horizontal. Or I'm sorry, not horizontal, <laughs> vertical. Uh, so I got a set of white envelopes and then a set of this, the pink envelopes. Cause I, I, for some reason I, I see floral stamps on these. So I thought it would be fun to try some of my floral stamps on these slimline cards and then use some of these pretty envelopes with them too. So, so those are some of the supplies I've gotten. Oh, I also got a set of yellow too. I thought that was a pretty springtime yellow. So I picked those up and then let's go over to my kind of scrapbook section. I was excited, I'll, I'll put a link. Um, I've talked about my, my scrap table before. This is back on Amazon again. It had gone away and wasn't available and then it had a different price on it. I don't know, it was just, it, it kind of appeared and didn't appear. So it, I recently saw that it's back on again. So I'll put a link to it for anybody who might be interested. This is a great option for a smaller space. I didn't have a lot of room over here to have like a little scrapbooking station, but I thought this would be a really nice table. It's about uh, 36 by 36 roughly, but it's a, it's a dining table, but it's countertop height. And it's kind of meant for a smaller home or a smaller dining area, but I like it because it has, 
I'm trying not to show you my other storage area because it's not craft related. It's just like stuff that we, we put other stuff in the house over there. So, but um, this, it came with this, these shelves and they're really nice because there's like, there's two shelves and then a bottom shelf and you can, you know, put whatever you want on there that's crafting related. So I have some, some binder clips and and some washi tape and that type of thing that I'm using for making journals. But then, you know, I just, I like the table for, for scrapbooking too, because you can kind of lay everything out and you don't have the card making supplies there. I don't keep any, like a supply caddy or anything on top of it. I just like to keep everything clear. So if somebody wants to use it for something else, they can use the table. But then I have it free to kind of decide what project I want to do and just go ahead and, and have the, I have to move a bunch of stuff to, to get started. So anyway, I'll, I'll put a link to the table because I, I really like it. And I talked about in my last video that, or my tools, like I found a couple of helpful tools. And I talked about how I made a scratch in this table with my craft knife. <laughs> and I needed something to cover it up. And so I have this um, glass mat on top, which works great because it's nice and big. And I have the same one on my card making craft table too. And I really like it because it's mint green and it's got a lot of surface area on it. So, so anyway, it's, I like it. And I've been also working on another journal. This will be going into my Etsy shop. And this is a signature journal. The last one I put in there was a ring journal. And this one, I really like how it turned out. I haven't, I want to put in some more like pockets and maybe some ephemera or something. I don't know how, how big I'm going to make it with that kind, kind of stuff. But I, uh, I, I liked the, the cover. It's an old Reader's Digest um, condensed book. And it had the spine was coming off. It was kind of like breaking off. So I removed the spine and then I replaced it with just some chipboard and created the signatures. And I kind of decorated the front with some fabric. And then I made it kind of a, kind of a mom themed journal. So it's got like, kind of, it's more, it's more feminine style flowers. And it's kind of, it's got a little bit of a vintage flair to it too. I, um, I don't know. I just kind of, they, they talk about how your, I think, um, Pam from the paper outpost talks about how your journal kind of tells you how it wants to be made. And it's honestly really true. You can start off having an idea and being inspired by what you want your journal to look like. And then all of a sudden, as you're making it, it becomes something else, either by just going through your papers and finding something that might work better than something else. And it really does kind of make itself. So it's kind of interesting how that works. But um, I, I like the way this turned out. So I just need to add some more things to it. And then I'll probably do a final flip through before I, I post it. So, so that was that. And then I just wanted to kind of go over to my uh, bookshelf here and show you a couple of the things that I had talked about on my blog. So some books that have, that have kind of stood the test of time as far as being inspired. I'm trying to move the chair out of the way here so I can, can kind of show you. Here's a kind of a pan out of the, the shelf. So I have binders that I've kept from long time ago. I have scrapbook sketches. So ideas for if I'm doing scrapbooking sketches that I saw, you know, maybe online, just inspiration. Um, some classes that I took for scrapbooking. I really liked Victoria Marie has some great classes. Jen Scow also had, has some great um, scrapbooking classes as well. So I've taken a couple of their classes. And so I save, they, have, they always come with materials. So I always save them in a binder to refer back to. And then the online card classes class, classes are really good if you are maybe you've kind of run out of ideas or you need some technique ideas or something this is great because they have everything they show you how to use Copics they do go into watercoloring on your greeting cards um just about anything you can think of clean and simple design different you know design techniques and then 
I also have this binder of just card making techniques. So back a long time ago when I, you know, didn't know anything about card making, I would put in ideas for heat embossing and dry embossing and, you know, coloring in stamps and that kind of thing. So I, I kind of kept everything in one binder to kind of refer back to and get ideas for techniques to try. So, and then over here I have, I always save my monthly magazines that I get. So I have um, creative scrapbooking and um, scrapbook and cards today. I keep the most recent issues. I, I don't keep everything after, I think I, a couple of them, I think these magazines come four times a year. So as I take out, as I get new ones in, I'll take out the older ones that are from like a year ago or something. So I'll just keep the most recent ones here, but they're great to refer back to. So I keep those here. And then I also have magazines from, these are from a really long time ago. Um, back when they, I don't know, for those of you who have crafted for a long time, paper crafts, um, paper crafts magazine, it was called. They had some great special issue magazines about like card design and making um, certain types of cards and that kind of thing. So I saved the ones that I really liked. And I also keep, sometimes I'll find like inspiration from the flea market style magazines. They have some great, just some light and bright colored pictures in it. And I love to make floral cards and I get a lot of inspiration from those magazines too. So don't ever um, forget about, you know, like the, the country living magazines and the, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, HGTV magazine too has some great color inspiration in it. I, I sometimes will pick up one of those and just kind of flip through it just to get some color combination ideas and stuff. So that's a great place to find inspiration too for your crafting. And then I'm trying to think of what else I have in here. More flea, I always get the flea market Christmas magazines too because they have the old timey Christmas that I really like. So I just, those are just, I only, I only keep this many magazines at a time. I don't, I mean, I could just keep all of them, but you know, after a while you can run out of space. So, so I just keep enough, enough that's for me to read for a little bit. So, and then I have just some older scrapbooking books. So, and they have the Martha Stewart Encyclopedia of Crafts, which is always fun to flip through. The Joy of Scrapbooking, that's an oldie. And then Scrapbook Embellishment Handbook. This is kind of fun to look at. It has a lot of really old, like the, the deco scissors, and which I think are coming back actually. But it's funny to, if you look through the books, you can see stuff that comes back around again. Like I'm seeing people using brads again on, on projects and brads were really popular back in, um, you know, 2007, 2008. Um, so it's kind of fun to, to flip through. The, these are creating keepsakes books. Page maps. These are great for scrapbooking inspiration and sketches. Um, what else? Let's see. Scra scrap lifting inspiration. There are all these books. I used to get them from the bookstore. And so just I have a lot of different ones. One of my favorite, these are a few of my favorites that I've um, talked about on the blog post was this book from Betsy Flott. It's called Inspiration Station. And this is a great book for scrapbooking and card making. It is basically a reference book. It's almost like a dictionary or an encyclopedia of just lists, lists of different titles for scrapbooking pages, sentiment ideas, um, story, kind of story starter type words and phrases. So this is really helpful for both um, scrapbooking and card making. And so I've had this book for a long time and I've referred, referred back to it quite a bit. And then another book I really like too is this one from, this is Dana Wakeley's Art Journal Freedom. And if you like to art journal, this give it's almost like a step-by-step step on how to do it. I have tried it before and I it's a great way to kind of just let yourself explore color and, and color combinations and it, it's always very helpful to do that if you're trying to you know be inspired to make cards or even your scrapbooking um, designs too. So so it's good to try different things you know within the the art world 
to kind of help yourself do better in what you really like to do, whether it's card making or scrapbooking or journal making, anything like that. And um, let me see, a couple other, these are, I talked about these on my blog too. These are some older books. Let's put these on the table here. This is um, the Non-Designer's Design Book by Robin Williams. And White Space is Not Your Enemy. <laughs> and these are both really good books on design. And they've, I, these were recommended many years ago by, I can't remember, it was either a blogger or a YouTuber. And I picked them up and they really are helpful in trying to kind of understand design principles if you're not a graphic designer by, for your job or anything like that. So um, these are great books just to kind of read about design and, and, you know, the rule of threes and that kind of thing. So, so these are, these are fun too, to, to read. And so that's about it for my, my inspiration bookshelf, but I thought it would be fun to kind of dive a little deeper into it. Um, but let me know if you have any questions about anything I have up here. It's, it's I, I can't part with these because I just think they're, they're so fun to go through. And it kind of reminds me of when I first started paper crafting and, and how far I've come with it. And um, it's just, and how much fun it is. So, so anyway, I hope you are feeling inspired today to work on whatever crafting you like to do. And definitely check out my blog post. I'll put a link to it in the notes um, where you can read more about some other places to find inspiration. I'll talk about some podcasts I like too, because I love to have a podcast on in the background when I'm when I'm doing some crafting too. So, so thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you in my next video.